In this video, we'll go over how to analyze images of dendritic spines using automatic detection software and three-dimensional neuron reconstruction. This software is courtesy of an MBF bioscience program called Neurolucida 360. Before you can start detecting or tracing any neuronal structures, you'll first have to create an image stack file of all of your confocal images and correct the image scaling information embedded in your file. Looking at the text file associated with all of our individual confocal image frames, we will make note of the scaling information for the X, Y, and Z dimensions. After selecting all of the individual frames, we want to turn into a merge stack file and dragging them directly into the Neurolucida 360 window, we will click Select All, Stack Selected Groups, and Load. This is our image scaling dialog box where we are going to input all of the information we got from our text file, including the scaling information for the Z, X, and Y dimensions. We'll then update our new image file, allowing the scaling info to be written into the file itself for the duration of the program. We will then save this new image stack with all of the correct scaling information, which is an incredibly important step when working with fine neuronal structures such as dendritic spines. Step 2 is to now optimize our three-dimensional image for tracing and spine detection. Neurolucida 360 has both a 2D window and a 3D environment. We will be using both for the duration of the program. In our 3D environment, we will go to the top toolbar and select the icon that says Open Image File selecting the stack that we saved in our previous step. Now panning over to the 2D window, we'll select the Image Toolbar, Max Projection for fluorescent images, and open the Image Adjustment window, where we can use this histogram on the right to decrease background noise in our image and increase the contrast, which results in better accuracy when automatically detecting microstructures such as spines. And now going back into our 3D environment, you can see just how much clearer our stack is without all that unnecessary background noise. Now for the purposes of our video, we're going to skip past the automatic SOMA detection that Neurolucida 360 offers and head straight into user-guided dendritic tree tracing. So over on the right side of our screen, we'll select Tree. For tracing mode, we'll select User-Guided. And then in User-Guided Tracing Options, we're going to have to figure out our average process width. So heading back to our 2D window, we can add a scale bar for reference by going to the Publish toolbar, selecting Scale Bar, and then clicking on the image where we want it to be displayed. We can also go over to the Trace toolbar, select Measure Line tool, and measure various different process widths throughout our dendritic arbor, estimating an average width to help increase the accuracy of the user-guided tracing software. There are three different methods for user-guided tree detection. So we're going to select whichever one of those seems to work the best with our image and proceed to click repeatedly along the length of the tree segment. To end a branch, we can simply right click. Once all of our tree segments have been detected and traced, there are many different user-friendly editing options available on the right-hand side of the screen where it says edit. It's super important that our tree tracings are accurate as the more accurate these are, the more accurate our automatically detected spine counts will be. Throughout this entire process, it's also good practice to repeatedly save our tracing in the case of the program crashing. This can be done with the purple Save Tracing icon in the top left corner of our screen. Now for the next step, we will be using Neurolucida 360's fully automatic dendritic spine detection and classification software. Now heading over to the spine category in the top right corner of our screen, we'll adjust all of our detector settings, including setting our detector sensitivity at fairly low to begin with, and then making sure all of these boxes are checked off. If we go now and click on one of the tree tracing segments from our previous step, Neurolucida 360 should automatically detect all of the spines on that segment at the detector sensitivity that we selected. We're going to go back and keep increasing that detector sensitivity until we notice with visual checks that there are not really any more spines to be detected on that segment. Similarly to our tree tracings, there are also user-friendly editing options available for spines. If the software mistakenly detected multiple spines as a single spine, you can use the split tool to split this up into multiple parts. You can also use the remove tool to select one or multiple spines and remove them, or you can select multiple spines that it may have detected as different structures and merge them together into one. 
once we're satisfied with the visual checks of our spines, we can click the classify all button to automatically classify all the spines into mushroom, philopodia, thin, and stubby subtypes. For our final step, we'll export all of our data to Neurolucida Explorer for analysis. In the top left corner of our screen along the 3D environment toolbar, the button with the N that says save and view in Neurolucida Explorer will automatically open another window on our desktop with all of our data exported and ready for analysis. We are now going to click on Analyze, Structure, and Branch Structure Analysis. In the Neurolucida user manual, the four analysis parameters recommended for dendritic spine analysis were individual dendrites, dendrite totals, dendrite spines, and spine details. Whichever parameters you do select will generate a fully formulated spreadsheet ready for export and further statistical analysis.